I'm at Doric Buck and Quine and this is one of the most beautiful, rugged and exposed parts of Scotland's coastline. Well, I must apologise if I didn't speak my own Doric tongue because through the passing of time, words get lost, sentences disappear. But I think in my own Doric culture. Well, our way of life here in um, Buchan, area of this area of um, Doric, Doric speaking folk. Um, well, we're not so much as we used to be. <laughs> but um, the whole point of um, what I'm doing here is to present where we are now in our culture here in the northeast of Scotland. It's to, yes, to flick back a wee bit on the past, but it's mainly to see where we are now and it's to bring a new perspective on our Doric culture. We're never going to be the same again. That's just life. But what we do can do is we can glean from the past, from our forefathers, from our history and heritage. We can look at far we are the new and we can be hopeful for a bright future ahead. Nobody cares if it's going to happen, but indeed we can take courage from those that have gone, gone before us. And this is indeed fit, has inspired me to, to do my video work. Well, in fact, it's more than just about our coast and waters. It's about the folk, it's about the history, the heritage, our uniqueness. So if you've a mentee, have a look at www.doricfuture.co.uk. It brings a new perspective on our Doric culture. It's got a bit of everything in it, bit of the past, bit of the present, and hopefully to inform the future, we're alive and kicking. <laughs> so we'll take a trail, travel along the coastline. There's not much words needed, because the land and the sea speaks for itself. I cannot overemphasize how dangerous these cliffs are with coastal erosion. Extreme care must be taken. Buchan is renowned not just for its big sea, but for its big sky. The Twa Een. And sometimes it does us greed just to step out of life and to see things from a different angle. Come in for a basic firm and background, I have a great affiliation to the land and to the sea and to my own homeland. We are the folk live and breathe fishing and firming. Well, I'm not just a young queen on a mare. I turned 60 
this year, 2020, and I was just recollecting my own roots, my own background, and thinking, God, there was no much entertainment in them days. Muckle of time, we would have just run down the parks to the seaside and looked over to the cliffs and to the sea, and we, that was your that was your playing time. That was that was fit we did to amuse ourselves. And believe you me, as barons, we took every opportunity <laughs> to run away from the rigours of firm life and the hard work that we had to do in our weather conditions. Yet, I did not regret these days for a minute, because basically, life, and it was not that long ago, was, was about surviving the best way that you could. It, it's the values. It's the values that I hold mostly dear to my heart for my upbringing, eh, for the land and for the sea. Very simple why I live in, for folk had to look after in another. You didn't have much in life, but if you did, you cherished. You didn't waste nothing. And we had, and on the farm, we had money, struggles and hardships. You just couldn't uh, go down to a shop and buy food because the food came to you in vans, maybe in a week. You had to put up with the elements. Long, coarse winters that seemed to go on forever, feeding sheep in parks next to the sea here, and it would have been a blind drift, or snow, blizzards, and you had to carry the sheep off the cliffs. Uh, where they were grazing. Well, I didn't regret these days. It gave me a sense of great belonging. It gave me a sense, a deep-rooted sense of who I am, who I cherish, who I value. It gave me a sense of I could survive in, in difficult times in my life and even crises, which I've done. And it's ah, doon to my ain Durick Buchan roots, the why that was brought up. And thankfully, some things didn't change, something we can depend on, the ground that we whack on, sea, the sky, an environment that sustains us, partly sustains us. A rock can't do by. We ate our own tatties, neeps, carrots, cabbage that we grew ourselves on the farm. The animals had a very, very healthy and happy life. Everything that they had to sustain them was grown by ourselves. In the winter time, we would feed our cattle in the byre, and everything that they, that they had was grown throughout the seasons. They had neeps, they had silage, they had hay, they had bruised corn, barley. And there was a great satisfaction for me when I used to leave a buyer after the night was half fed. I put the light suit and I used to hear them chomping. <laughs> they were content beasts. They were content beasts because they were lovingly cared for. We kent every one of them. Well, this time has been a, a great time of uh, reflection for me. Just the quietness of nature to look back on for I've come for and uh, to pay respect to the uh, our forefathers, those that have gone before us, because this is, you know, this is who we are. This is who we, ha we have become through their efforts. So on a personal note for the generations gone back in my own fairman background, for my grandfathers, my, my dad, my brother, but rather were hard work, relentless work that they've put in over the years. It'll never be forgotten.
Life nowadays seems to be quite complex, very fast moving. Seems to be worlds apart eh, than I was in my younger days. So it's fine that I've just been able to time to sit down, take stock, reflect. So it's good in life just to slow down, take stock, be thankful for the small things in life that mean a lot. The fact that we can breathe fresh air in this area, abundance of wildlife, scenery, open spaces. It's all free. It's all free to, w to look at, to wander around, to explore. And then the parks are Hinmer, they're just newly sown, waiting for a new crop to appear for a new season. And indeed, that's where I've basically come from, the seasons of life, to watch in nature, being absorbed in it, going with the flow of it. And these muckle steens are Hinmer, are a reminder of our past and our heritage, something that nothing or nobody can take away from us. And that's the important thing about any culture. It's deep rooted. And through the great circle of life, it hunts us together. Well, you know, looking at nature, looking at our the wonderful sights around about us here, and our heritage, you know, our background, our culture, it's 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 given me a good sense of well being. Um especially in these difficult and challenging times. And it's given me a sense of purpose, a sense of peace, and it's just made life more bearable. Well, you know, it gives me a great sense of pleasure looking um, back at our great history, heritage, culture, here in the, nor the northeast of Scotland in this area of Buchan. Um, it gives me a deep seated um, sense of who I am. It gives me a great pride in where I've come from and it gives me great hope for the future. Well, there's been many folk being inspired by our coastline. This area behind me is called the Waters Moo. Um, the writer Bram Stoker wrote um, a novel, a book on uh, the Waters Moo, and of course went on to write the world famous novel Dracula. He was highly absorbed by our coastline. Our coastline, our culture, our history inspired him to write his books, to dream his dreams. And most of all, as it's done for me, give him a quiet space to be creative. And indeed, part of my life, when I was finding it very rocky, very difficult, I picked up on the steps of Bram Stoker and I did exactly what he did. And I trod along these shores and these cliff lines till it brought me some peace. Have a look at um, YouTube Jill McWilliam and you'll find uh, more of my thoughts on just what indeed inspired, well what I thought inspired Bram Stoker, the writer of the famous novel Dracula. Hit the subscribe button. Doric Future is a free channel.